this quickish look at Stable Diffusion, I want to take you down a small rabbit hole into the inner workings of Stable Diffusion and what it does and how we can use this knowledge to manipulate its output. This blog post here is called Illustrated Stable Diffusion. I'll link it in the description. And this brilliantly illustrates what is happening inside our algorithm. So in this case, we've got a description here, a prompt, Paradise Cosmic Beach. And what happens in order to drive the diffusion process, which is the step-by-step -step denoising of an initial random image into an image that is somewhat similar to what we prompted. To control this, we are using a bunch of numbers, a vector, which is called an embedding. And it is literally a bunch of numbers, a list with numbers. And the way we generate these numbers is through two steps. First, we take our input here, our prompt, and turn it into tokens. What are tokens or how do they look? Well, again, they are numbers, they are IDs. And for each word or for each piece of a word, they have a certain ID. And we can visualize them using Automatic 1111's web UI for Stable Diffusion with the Tokenizer and Embedding Inspector plugins installed. And in the Tokenizer extension here, I can prompt something. For example, photo of a puppy wearing a hat. And then tokenize this. And you can see we get this color-coded clickable segmentation of our prompt. And when we hover over a certain word here or a certain phrase in our prompt, we can see the ID of the token, that is the token's number, into which Stable Diffusion's tokenizer has split up this prompt. So in this case, photo of a puppy wearing a head would be a list of numbers starting with 1125, then 539, then 320, and so on and so on. Now the number of tokens is limited. So what happens if I enter a prompt using a word that is not in the tokenizer's library? Let's try this. And instead of wearing a hat, my puppy is now wearing a Oompa Rumpli. Let's tokenize this. And now you can see that my made up word Oompa Rumpli has been split up into separate chunks, into word components, each with their own separate ID again, which again will be written into that list of numbers, which then will be passed on to create embeddings. And it's these token embeddings that control how our diffusion process is being steered. To illustrate this, we can use the embedding inspector extension here. So let's, for example, take the puppy, which has the ID 6829. Let's go to the embedding inspector and let's enter 6829 and inspect it. And not only are we getting the output vector, that means an embedding for this token, the token for puppy. So puppy would be turned into this vector here, into this tensor list of numbers. But also we can see similar tokens that are somewhat related to our puppy token here. And one popular method of training stable diffusion and to customize it with your own training data without having to train the whole neural net is to retrain those embeddings based on a bunch of training data, meaning images that you provided with. However, that's been by now superseded by other techniques, for example, Green Booth in combination with LoRa. But there's still one interesting bit left that we can do with embeddings, and that is to mix them. For example, to create a hybrid, a chimera between a puppy and a fish or a puppy and a bird. And in order to do so, I want to take you into a more deeper dive into stable diffusion than just plainly using the web UI here. And I'll base this off of this Stable Diffusion Deep Dive Jupyter Notebook provided by FastAI here. And while you can install Jupyter Notebooks on your machine locally or use Google Colab or Kaggle or any other cloud service, in this case, I want to use VS Code to go through this and modify it. And in VS Code, you have to make sure that under the extensions, you've got your Jupyter Notebooks extensions installed and of course, Python. So let's open up our original deep dive notebook that we downloaded here and let's have a look at it. So in the very first cell here, we're setting up everything, just importing a bunch of libraries and setting up our computational device to our GPU here. Then we're going to load our model. In this case, we are using Hugging Face, where you need an account to load the Stable Diffusion version 1.4 model. However, I want to use the more modern, in my opinion, a bit less biased model version 2.1. So let's compare this to this version that I modified already here. So that's our import. And then under loading the models, I commented out this here. And instead, I used the diffusers workflow to load in Stable Diffusion 2.1 like this. So let's copy everything here and let's replace these lines here like this. Let's see if that worked. And apart from this semicolon here, that's a bit too many. That seemed to have worked nicely. Yeah. And after around nine seconds of execution time, we are good to go. So the first thing we're doing here is we're just testing if that worked so far. And we try to generate a watercolor painting of an otter, which works. Now I want to skip a bunch of those cells where this notebook goes into detail about explaining what the several parts of stable diffusion do within the algorithm and how they're influencing the algorithm. However, I am only interested down here in this passage called messing with embeddings, as I can use this code here to blend between several embeddings. So just to see if everything executes well until here, I'll just go to run all cells here and this gets executed. Hopefully 
successfully without any errors. So that seems to have worked. Uh, we're trying to generate a chimera between a leopard and a mouse here. So let's try dialing in the weights. So currently we have 35% mouse embedding and 65% leopard embedding. Let's this biased a bit more towards mouse and let's re-execute this cell here. And you can see, yes, we're getting this thing moved more towards a mouse. What I also provided you with, download in the description, is this here, a reduced version that only does the messing with the embedding part. And I'll have to thank Chris Hoffman, also known as Ugly Stupid Honest, who really helped me with uh, debugging this and coming up with a proper solution for that. And if you don't know him, you should definitely check out his work. Brilliant AI artist, brilliant character artist as well, brilliant 3D artist. Go check out his Instagram. So in here, what we provide you with is not only the updated Stable Diffusion 2.1 model here that can be used to generate those images here and you can see we've got a normal inference here where we generate an otter and then we provide you with this bit of code with has this function generate with embeds with not only takes text embeddings that we can mess and blend with but also negative embeddings which becomes important when working with stable diffusion 2.1 as the output of the prompts is largely dependent not only on your positive prompting but also on your negative prompts so what you don't want and here we add it to this function so that you can not only use positive embeddings but also negative embeddings up here in this function, well, yes, if we would have worked cleanly, we could break this out. You can dial in the number of inference steps. You can dial in a seed with the height of the image and your guidance scale. The more important part is down here where we actually prepare to call this function, where we, in this case, provide three tokens, photo of a capybara, photo of an otter and a photo of an owl, as well as negative tokens, red, green, and blue, yellow, which we then, using the text encoder, turn into embeddings for the photo of a capybara, of an otter and an owl, sequentially, as well as for our red, green, and blue, yellow, negative token here. And then we mix them together in a really stupid fashion. So forget any linear blending, we just multiply the individual text embeddings with these weights, and then to make sure that they are normalized, we divide them by the sum of the mix factors here, the sum being just those individual mix factors here, summed up. And down here with the negative embeddings, I'm doing the same, just in this case, I've been even more stupid. And just as it's only two embeddings, calculated the sum of the mix factors directly in this line here. And then we can generate this. And this is our chimera between a capybara, an otter, and an owl. So what's the gist of this really quick tip? Well, first, just to have fun, you can use and download this script here, run it into VS Code, Jupyter Notebook, Kaggle, Google Colab, whatever, and generate your blendings between your individual embeddings to generate your chimeras or whatever between prompts. But also you can use this more elaborate notebook, the Stable Diffusion Deep Dive, which we only slightly modified to use the newer Stable Diffusion Model 2.1 to really get a great overview of what's happening beneath the surface of Stable Diffusion. And finally, if you just want to play around, I can highly recommend Automatic 11.11's extensions called the Tokenizer and the Embedding Inspector to just play around with and get a grasp of how Stable Diffusion is chopping up your input prompt and converting them into numbers, which are then being used by our denoising algorithm. And finally, I encourage you to dive away from Automatic 11.11's web UI, not because it's not comfortable or a great piece of software, no, but by building your stable diffusion loop from scratch or not necessarily building it from scratch yourself, but using any of those notebooks here as a base and then modifying those functions and those loops, you can really finally dive in and dial in what Stable Diffusion can do. And you really can start modifying it in an intricate level to be able to turn it into something a bit more elaborate and a bit deeper than just a tool for generating Lensa-like portraits for your social media. Again, if you need any inspiration of what can be done using Stable Diffusion and AI techniques, go visit Ugly Stupid Honest Instagram. And if you wanna learn more about generative art, procedural art using Houdini, Blender, Unreal and AI, or if you just want to plainly support us, consider becoming a patron of ours, as it's through the help of our patrons that we are able to run Intagma the way we do. With a very special thank you going out to Supermassive Games, Jellyfish Pictures, The Mill, Method Studios, Electric Theater, Via, Pixonic, Random 42, Rodeo FX, Side Effects, Illusion, Styleframe, and Rafik Studio. Thanks so much for your support. And as always, until next time, it is cheers and goodbye.